Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today we're going to be chatting about my December TBR. So, a couple of months back Run Right Reads uh, did a challenge where she attempted to read 30 books in 30 days and I was fully inspired by this but kind of had reading plans already um, for the couple of months. Um, but in December my exams will officially be done over completely sorted i will be hopefully assuming i pass everything a finished veterinary nurse and won't have stuff hanging over me like i've had for the past sort of two years and a bit so in celebration of this i figured i'd do the challenge as well and it'd be a really fun way to like clear out my tbr really blitz through a load of books and sort of celebrate the fact that i have some time back for myself um, and go into the new year with a sort of refreshed tbr that got rid of as much as i could at the same time so i'm going to be attempting to read 30 books in technically 31 days but you know Christmas is in there etc etc um, and uh, yeah we're gonna try and talk through all 30 books in this video hopefully this won't be an editing nightmare I've got little summaries on my phone that I'm gonna be reading out for a bunch of these and for a load of them I if I don't have the physical copy I don't necessarily have the author but they will all be here and they'll be in the comments down below I'm sorry guys this is insane to try and comment on. We're going in length order, give or take, although some of these, the reason why they're on here is that the audiobook is shorter than some other books that I've got fewer pages, so that's the logic to them. But anyway, let's start cracking through the books. The first one is actually a short story, and it's The Life of a Stupid Man by Atu Ak Akuta Tagawa. I butchered that, very sorry. Um, this was a gift in like a book subscription box, apparently this is a very well known author and this is just one of the short stories or possibly even three short stories in one, gonna read that guy. We have John Ruskin's On Art and Life, uh, Ruskin was a big art critic and sort of art supporter in the sort of pre-Raphaelite Victorian era, um, this is two essays of his looking at art. Cheeky non-fiction in there for you, thought they were all gonna be classics, we got a variety. This is a book that I bought at a juggling convention, it is called Juggling by Rupert Inglesey um, and this was the like original, um, one of the early examples of like a guide for how to juggle at home that has been revamped and has modern annotations on it. It's gonna be a bit of a weird read because I can juggle um, and am part of the circus community, I guess still, haven't done it really in years, um, but thought this would be fun and entertaining, bit of a history of leisure. We've got a fair amount of Russian literature on this one, we have uh, Tegenev um, who has written Rudin, Tegenev features twice on this TBR and this is a study of melancholic powerless men and vital idealistic women on the epoch of a pre-revolutionary Russia from 19th century. Can you tell I just went on Goodreads to prep for this? So yeah, read one of his books before, really enjoyed it, about time I did some more. We have uh, Why Sargasso Sea by uh, Jean Rise. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre, specifically looking at the mad woman in the attic um, who is a Creole woman who's kind of been sort of kidnapped I guess from Jamaica. Um, this was on a, couple, a TBR a few months back and I didn't quite get round to it so we're gonna try and give it a go now. I've yet to read Jane Eyre but fuck it we're gonna do them out of order. The only graphic novel on this uh, TBR which is a shame because that would have made this a lot easier of a challenge is Lock and Key Crown of Shadows. This is book three of the Lock and Key series. Um, this is sort of a horror-esque thing. I think there's like a haunted house vibe and there's some mysterious keys that um, open doors into sort of weird different dimensions. I read graphic the book one and two of this years ago and I really haven't read many graphic novels in a very long time just because they're quite expensive to collect. Um, but it would be good to try and get this sort of finished and vaguely off my TBR given I've owned it for so long. And I definitely did enjoy it the first time around. This is by Joe Hill um, who is Stephen King's son and does some really good horror stuff. We then have Barracoon which is by uh, Zora Neale Hurston, I might have said her name wrong. This is an interview with the last slave in America um, and uh, Zora Neale Hurston is like a noted um, black American author and this is supposed to just be basically phenomenal. Um, it's sort of a look at his life and his process of becoming freed um, and a look at sort of black history in general. So I think this is gonna be very, very cool. Then I have Man Tiger by uh, Aka Can Canaria? Oh god, sorry, I should have done more research before this video, that was appalling of, of me. Um, this again was on a TBR recently and is about sort of familial relations, sort of a warring families, but then a guy who can turn into a mythical white tiger, which is a sort of repeated motif um, in sort of Indonesian uh, folklore and history. I've read a few other books that have got that as like a recurring theme. So I started this, I literally got maybe 20 pages in for one of my previous TBR Yards, didn't quite get around to finishing it and then was like actually I'm gonna hold off for December so we're gonna go for that one. We have The Gambler by Dostoyevsky. This is a semi-autobiographical 
autobiographical book I believe and it's basically about a gentleman's struggles with addiction and then there's like a tortured love story in it as well. I've yet to read any Dostoevsky who is a big powerhouse name in Russia and sort of Russian literature. Um, his big one is Crime and Punishment which is far too big for a challenge like this um, so I thought I'd dabble with some of his smaller book. Uh, then we have Silas Mana by George Eliot. I've yet to read any George Eliot. This is going to be a really great challenge for like blitzing through a load of classic books that have been on my shelf for too long. This apparently is about a linen weaver and industrialization. Didn't know that before looking this up on Goodreads. You know we just buy classics because they're classics and this one I think was also in like a book subscription service. I've got a couple of things in this edition which is not an edition that I normally collect. Um, so we're going to try and finally get around to these and then get the English paperbacks so that they actually, the Penguin English paperbacks so they actually match. On the note of Penguin English Library paperbacks, we have uh, G.K. Chesterton's The Man Who Was Thursday, which is about an undercover cop who uh, infiltrates some kind of anarchism group um, and tries to overthrow some big thing that they're going to do. Um, this is supposed to be a really great spy novel and I think it's going to be really helpful to water down some of the slice of life stuff I've got going on behind me. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be a good change of pace that will be needed at some point this month. Our next Rudin book is on the, oh sorry Rudin book, Tegenev book is uh, on the eve and this is a tortured love story on the cusp of a revolutionary Russia which sounds very similar to what uh, Rudin was going to be so I don't really know what the vibe is <laughs> between these two I think there's more of a love story focus in this one which again hopefully will be a helpful sort of change of pace um, but the two plots do sound quite similar from just scanning the back so I look forward to learning the differences between the two of them we then have The Housekeeper and the Professor by Ogawa. This is a Japanese classic and I'm looking forward to this one and hoping it goes better than my previous Japanese classic I read from this collection, which sucked and was traumatizing. Um, this is about a gentleman who is an entomologist, I believe. Um, no, sorry, that's a completely different book. The Entomologist is coming up though. No, this is about a maths professor with short-term memory loss and the housekeeper who takes care of him. So that's going to be really fun. And this is such a pretty cover. I have so many of these books um, and I need to actually get around to reading them. Then we have The Mermaid of Black Conch, which is a magical realism book about the rescue of a mermaid and her subsequent transformations into being a human. Looking forward to this one, have it on audiobook and apparently the accent work is really fun in it. So I'm psyched about that. What I'm hella intimidated about is The Waves by Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf could have featured so many times on this challenge and I was like, let's limit it to one because I struggle with her writing. I've yet to finish any of her books even though I've attempted a couple of them several times. This one is about six children who are playing in a garden and then sort of their future lives as adults. They lose a close friend I think and it's about sort of loss and grief. Um, her writing is supposed to be quite strange and I generally struggle with her um, so I think I've got this one on audiobook and that will help but we're going to attempt one Virginia Woolf and see if I can finally crack her writing. We have The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. This was another one that was in like a book box of some sort hence the reason why it matches Silas Marner um, and this is about uh, a boy called Tom Sawyer and his like adventures being a scallywag is the vibe I get um, so it should be good fun the main thing I know about him I think is from fairly old parents so looking forward to changing that then we have The Timekeeper by Mitch Albom I cannot find my copy a little bit stressed about that fact gonna make it hard to actually read it and this is a story about the meaning of time following two characters and a cursed man looking for redemption according to the back of this then we have Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis and other stories. Uh, the Metamorphosis is about a guy who turns into a beetle, very, very well known, and then there's a collection of other short stories in it. I'm not normally a short stories person, but I think this could be helpful to break up this challenge a little bit. And again, this is a big name one that I've been really wanting to get to. These ones are the Alma classics, by the way, um, which are another edition that I'm trying to collect more of, but I really feel like I should make more of a dent on what I've got on my Tibby Red shelf before I go and buy another bundle of 10 from them, which is where I got this guy from. Isn't it pretty? We have The Warden by Anthony Trollope, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Barsetshire? Um, which is very much like a slice of life. This is about a scandal that uh, happens in like a cathedral town, I believe. Um, this is one that, again, I have tried to start multiple times and just found really fucking boring. Um, so I'm hoping this might be the time where I actually get through this one. This is another Penguin English Library paperback, so we need to start wading through these a little bit more. Um, so yeah, slice of life kind of stuff. So many of these are slice of lifes. 
I need to get myself some genre fiction in here. I guess on the note of genre fiction, I also have a uh, Make Room Make Room author to be over here. This is a dystopian future where people are short on resources and they live like stacked on top of each other and have to really fight over resources and then there is a murder mystery on top of it as well. It's supposed to be really good. I think my dad has read this one before and I've not done dystopian future fiction in such a long time. So this one again I have on audiobook and I'm really excited about it. Another audiobook one is Lowborn, again author over here. This is actually a memoir of a working class woman who um, grew up in extreme poverty in the UK and is basically looking at poverty in the UK and class in general and her experiences trying to leave poverty and sort of how she feels the situations are now. It's incredibly like well acclaimed kind of book. It's supposed to be sort of the British version of something like Made um, and I'm really intrigued by this one. I think it's gonna be really interesting to read. I want to say I heard about it on Amy Gets Lit's channel. Uh, then we have The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. This is the one with the entomologist who like goes out to some dunes to find some insects and then gets caught and trapped with a mysterious woman and they have to like endlessly dig this town out of the sand in some kind of like Sisyphean task. This is translated fiction and is supposed to be fantastic. It's like very well regarded. It has popped onto quite a few different TBRs in the past and I really need to commit to actually reading it because I think once I sit down and get going I'll really enjoy it but it's sort of it's a little bit intimidating at the moment so I'm gonna hopefully get to this one. Now the non-fiction we have is A Mind of Its Own by Cordelia Fine. This is about how your brain like distorts facts and like sort of your perception perceptions of the world, very much a sort of pop psychology book. I've read a few books from Cordelia Fine in the past, she's done a lot of work about like gender distinctions and the lack of biological evidence for gender distinctions, so I'm intrigued to read her stuff in like a still related to the field but less focused kind of area, um, and yeah I think this one's going to be really interesting. Um, it's you know talking about like why is the 13 times table so hard and like why do people believe fallacies and things like that, so I think it's going to be quite fun and it's nice to have some non-fiction in amongst all of these classics. Sticking with our non fiction we have So You Want to Talk About Race by Ioma Aluo. I believe is how you pronounce her name. This is a collection of essays looking at race in America. It's looking at everything from like police brutality to microaggressions to the n-word. Um, I have this on an audiobook as well as, as you can see, the physical form. I might bounce between them. I haven't decided. I've got a lot of audiobook stuff um, and this will be really, really good to read about. Um, so yeah, excited for this one. And I think some essay collections, again, are going to be good to like break up some of the classics reading in here, stuff that I can bounce around a bit more. Something on a completely different vein is Thomasina by Paul Gallico. This is about a uh, sort of child who is quite ill and then her like somewhat magical cat. I believe it's told from the point of view of a cat. Um, I've read Paul Gallico's Jenny when I was a kid, which is about a boy who gets turned into a cat and is so sweet and lovely. So this is slightly more of a like children's adjacent book. The writing is quite still like small and you know it's like a proper story that you would like but it's one that you would maybe read to your kids as such um so i think this is gonna be a wonderful change of pace to everything else we've got going on here and really just very joyful like paul gallico has the most beautiful writing then we have a uh, night bitch by rachel yodda this is about a uh, new mother's experiences sort of having uh, quite a bestial reaction to motherhood. She starts to develop fangs. Um, we get a bit of body horror in there. There's sort of a werewolfy kind of vibe to it. This um, was being recommended everywhere in October for Halloween. And I saw it in the bookstore and couldn't resist. And again, I think it's going to be good to have something that I can like properly blitz fast genre fiction for when I'm bored of things like The Warden, which I genuinely don't know if I'm ever going to get through that book, even though it's really short. What is it about short classics that are just hard work at times? So I'm psyched for this one about sort of I love books that look at motherhood and pregnancy is sort of in the as much as it is, it is beautiful and magical, also fucking horrifying thing that it is as well. And then I think the last one is uh, Plan for Chaos by John Wyndham. This was his unfinished book um, that has now been published sort of subsequently after his death. Um, and this is about a uh, Nazi vision of a world powerful master race via cloning. And it's got a murder mystery in there. Does that not just sound really fun? So some of these slightly longer ones I think are going to be fairly easy to get through because they are just sort of more fast paced and entertaining ones. I love John Wyndham. I have a video where I talk about all of John Wyndham's books and sort of rank them and review them. I'll link that down below. Um, and this is the only one of his that I have yet to finish. So hopefully this will be the month where I do it. There you have it. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit. Um, I This is what I'm attempting to do in December uh, for my TBR. This is the longest TBR I think I've ever done, save maybe some of the TBRs that happened during lockdown when I was reading so much. Um, so do let me know in the comments down below 
if you read any of these, if you fancy doing this challenge, if you've seen other people do this challenge. Rum Right Reads, I believe, did manage to read all 30, so I am determined I'm also going to be able to do this, even if we have to pull some late nights at the very end. Um, and yeah, are there any on here that you're particularly excited to hear my thoughts about? Have a wonderful reading week, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!